Patrick Zuidam, you told me that your life basically started in the distillery and that you worked here as a child. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, of course, my, uh, my father started the distillery when I was five, six years old. So my brother and me, we basically grew up in the distillery and my parents were you know, poor and they had to work seven days a week to make this distillery work. So we as children had to come along and help. You know, this is child labor is not just something Chinese, it's something we do in Holland as well. Um, and you know, we spent most of our days uh, after school and on Saturdays and Sundays in and around the distillery. Mm. That means you learned distilling here at the distillery from your father. Yes, we, we uh, were taught uh, from a very young age. Uh, as you know, distilleries uh, run on cleaning, so our jobs were very much, uh, you know, around cleaning and, 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 and making everything tidy uh, around the stills, inside the stills. I was a very small child, so my father just would put me up, pick me up and put me inside the still to clean on the inside. And did you back then know that you would like to run a distillery and to be in the footsteps of your father? No, I don't think so, because um, as a child, I was just enjoying the spending time with my parents mm -hmm. because um, you know, as they were working a lot, it was uh, for us being here with them was, was you know, family time, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it, we had a great childhood in and around this story. The fact my parents always told me, you know, get a good education, you know, uh, learn a good trade and then if then after everything mm. you still want to you know get into the business then you're welcome but you know there's easier ways to make money than running a distillery and how did you find your passion for distilling and your passion for whiskey i have a, a masters in information management so okay. I, you know i have a university degree in information management and there were so many jobs at that moment in time in the early 90s you know. Uh, surrounding IT and information management so but it was very tempting to go into uh, that line of business but I grew up in this distillery mm -hmm. uh, it, and it wasn't making money but it was home it was something that you know from a, you know the youngest rem memories that I have is, is me being in the distillery with my parents and it's a nice business to be in. The distilling business is a, you know, you know that you, you are here as well in the distillery, in the distilling business. It is a business where people, you meet lots of nice and friendly people. Um, you you lots of nice colleagues as well from all over the world. Um, you know, I have colleagues from Ireland and, and Scotland and, and wherever you, you think of whiskey is made. And it's, it's a nice industry to be in. Right. And uh, whiskey, it, is, it didn't start out as a whiskey distillery, did it? No, no, no. My father mainly did liqueurs. Okay. And when I grew up, it was mainly about liqueurs. Um, and I would say my father was stubborn to start his own distillery in the 70s. Um, but I'm afraid that stubbornness has not left the family uh, yet. Um, I think both my brother and me are stubborn as well. And I always loved whiskey, you know. Um, being in this business, business for that long, you get exposed to lots of different products during my childhood and, and adolescence. Uh, you know, we, um, I got a taste of cognac and Armagnac and Calvados and all kinds of beautiful products from around the world. But the product that always um, touched me, is that the right word? Maybe, but the, the product that always stuck with me the most was was whiskey you know from my late teens early 20s i was into whiskey i loved springbank and i loved old mccallans and that kind of whiskeys they, they just they hit a nerve and it just grabbed me so when i entered when i came into the distillery i said I'll love to come and work in the distillery with you guys, but this is what I want to do. I want to make whiskey and I want to make Geneva from scratch.
when they say you want to make whiskey, did you have the idea to make Scotch whiskey or Scottish whiskey in, 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 in Holland? Or did you from the beginning decide that it should be something very of its own kind? I don't think I, I was that conscious about the difference between Scotch whiskey and, and, and and non-Scotch whiskey back then, because there, back then it was mostly Scotch whiskey that was drunk in Holland. I just knew what I liked. You know, I liked certain flavor profiles. Mm. I was some certain whiskies that I tasted that that hit a nerve, and and that's what I wanted to do. And not to copy, but that kind of um, a tribute to that kind of flavor profile. And now, more than twenty-five years later. How would you describe the difference between your whiskey and a typical Scotch whiskey? Is there some? Would you say they are the same? I think the, the production methods that we use in any malt whiskey distillery around the world mm. is 99% very similar. Mm. Uh, we, we grow malted barley, we mill malted barley and, and we, we, we use it for um, brewing a beer and then we distill it. So far, I think it, it's all very similar. It, it, the details are, are different in the production and, and those details you can, I think, taste back when it comes to the final product. So we spend a lot of effort in the brewing part of the business. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I always thought that a lot of the flavor profile came from the fermentation process. Um, and when I was talking to my Scottish friends, um, they, at the time, that part of the business was not so much um, talked about. It was, you know, it was necessary to do fermentation, but there was no deep studies about what exactly the fermentation um, did to the flavor profile. Mm. So, but I, th that was me or you? Um, that is something I think that um, we do different. We spend a lot of time from the early on, a lot of time on the fermentation sites, looking into how do flavors come into being, you know, what steps in the fermentation process yield what kind of flavor profile and what can we do to tweak it mm -hmm. to your own you know, preferences. I think that is the major difference between our whiskey and Scotch whiskey. Um, nowadays, I think the, the, the differences are getting smaller. You know, I hear my Scottish friends are even starting to make rye whiskey these days. Yes, they are. Well, Patrick, thank you for these insights. And in the next steps, we will walk from theory to uh, practice and have a look at your whiskies. <laughs>